applications, notification of graduation. Got to get in this month if you're graduating this term. Good idea to get it in this month if you're graduating in the summer. If you're not coming in summer but graduating in the fall, still a good idea to get it done this month. But you've got to get it done for a graduation this time. And then there's, I saw a list that probably may not have been quite this thick for February scholarships. And I bet you they got one for March coming up if they don't already have it out there. All right, any questions on anything we've done so far? What's he say? Okay, that'll be great. Uh, I'll be glad to take them. If you have any questions before or after, I mean, let me know. Okay, uh, we're in, if there's no questions, we're in section 2.2 on the top of page 53. Okay. Um, it's, again, you're sort of making a connection between Uh, we've been making the connections or comparisons between uh, properties of real number operations, associative, commutative, distributive, those kinds of things, and uh, matrix operations. Okay? And we know some are similar, real numbers uh, and matrices adding. The operation of addition is commutative, okay? But operation of multiplication for real numbers is commutative, for matrices generally not commutative. So there are some similarities and some differences, okay? One important property of addition of real numbers is that the number zero, now do you have a book? Yeah, okay, well, maybe some of the ones listening don't. Uh, is the number zero is the additive identity element, okay? Anything you add to zero becomes zero. I mean, not becomes itself. Doesn't change. Okay, seven plus zero is seven. Negative three eighths plus zero is negative three eighths. Nothing changes. Well, um, c plus zero is c for any real number c. For matrices, a similar property holds. Specifically, if a is an n. Well, let me get my pen colored properly. Things are so slow. Here we go. Think, yeah. Um, if A is an M by N matrix, okay, and you want to add another matrix to it, that's not going to change anything. Then you add the zero matrix that is also an M by N. Now, what is a zero matrix that's an M by N? Let's just say A is a two by three then you would add to that what? Zero, 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 zero. A two by three zero matrix. And when you add that to A, guess what? Every element A, I, J, from I going from one to two and J going from one to three, you're going to get A as a result. Whatever you add to a zero matrix stays that same matrix. Emmanuel is here. All right. Now, so the zero matrix is the additive identity matrix. Okay? But here's the thing, and, and usually when we list zero matrix, to keep from confusing that for a zero Number, you could put n by n here, or sometimes we bolt, the book bolds it. If it's a bold zero, that means it's a matrix. If it's a non-bolded zero, that means it's a number zero. So I can't bold in my writing, so I put the vector notation over it, even though it's not a vector. This is one place where I do get a little lax with my symbology, because I just can't think of any other way to do it. So 
that's the uh, that'll be my representation for a zero matrix is to put a vector symbol over it. Sorry, I can't think of anything else that would do as well, because usually in the book vectors are bold, so I write them with a with a symbol over it. So since they bolded the zero, even though it's not a vector, it's a matrix. I'll put it the same symbol. So here are the properties of the zero. This is on page 53 uh, in section 2.2, theorem 2.2. By the way, any questions before we get started? Okay. All right. If A is an M by M matrix, just like we said here, okay, and C is a scalar, meaning just any real number, okay, then the following properties are true. Okay, you can add this to the other properties we had in three in 2.1. Okay, first, A, A is an M by M matrix, plus, and then they put the zero. Now this time they didn't, uh, <laughs> it looks like to me what he's using here is a capital O. Just looking, it's not a zero. If you look at the difference in the, the uh, text, uh, so it's making it look like a capital O, and maybe that's what he's using. I don't know. Just to be safe, I'm going to put the zero matrix, okay, uh, like this. And it's also, and I like to do M by N, they just do M N, okay? Or sometimes they do M by N, but they just do M N. If you add... A, which is a M by N or M N matrix, to the zero matrix of the same size, then you still get the matrix A. Okay? There's your first property, as we were discussing before. Here's another one. If you add A to exactly the opposite of A, now what does that mean? Every element in A is negated. Every one. All six elements, or n, n times n elements, m times n elements are negated. Whatever they were before, you just do the opposite of them. And when you add those two together, obviously you're going to get the zero matrix of size m n. Okay? And then the third one. If C times the A matrix is equal to the zero matrix, MN, then one of two things has to be true. If that's true, then one of these two has to be true. Either, what would you guess? C has to be zero, or the A matrix itself was the zero M N matrix. It had to be. No way around it. One of those had to be true because you can't multiply any two entities together and get the zero matrix unless either the scalar is zero or the original matrix is totally the zero matrix already. Okay, good deal. Uh, so the algebra of real numbers and the algebra of Matrices, many similarities. Um, we're going to do a series of operations, it looks like. Okay? What if you start with, okay, in real numbers, we know that X plus A, if that's equal to B, we know what to do, right? If we want to solve for X, subtract A from both sides, and you get X equal b minus a, because these add to zero. Well, if you're dealing with matrices, and they're the right size matrices, they're all m by n's here, and you have a matrix x added to a matrix a, all m by n's, that's going to yield the matrix b, m by n. If that's what you're given, you don't know what the elements of the x matrix are, but you do know what they are for a and b. In other words, x is your variable matrix, a and b are constant matrices, then what you can do is subtract the matrix A from both sides of the equation. Now, 
I like to do it this way. It really works a little better with numbers than it does with matrices, but you, I think you get the idea. This adds to the zero matrix, as we saw right here, okay? And that gives you the X matrix, M by M matrix, is the B matrix minus the A matrix. And that's an easy subtraction usually to do, okay? Uh, so, I skipped a few steps from what they did, but I think you get the, the general gist. So let's do example two. What if A is this matrix? One, negative two, zero, three. Okay. And B is negative three, four, two, one. Okay. Begin by, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't read the instruction. Solve for x, but x being a matrix, not a variable, because it's a capital X. Solve this, 3x plus a is equal to b. How would you do that? First, you subtract a from both sides, and let's do that right here. B minus A would be negative 3, 4, 2, 1, minus 1, negative 2, 0, 3. And that would equal what? Obviously a 2 by 2 because they are the same size. You can subtract them. What would that give you? It would be the elements of your difference of those two uh, matrices. Okay, so again, negative four. Okay, negative four is the first one. Everybody see it? Six is the second one. Two is the next one. Negative two is the last one. Very good. Now that's what, and if you did this, that's what 3x is equal to. So what do we do next? Divide by 3, which is the same as multiplying by one-third. So x is equal to one-third of this matrix, minus 4, 6, 2, negative 2. Now, frankly, I like that form perfectly fine. I'm, I have no problems with it. You can multiply through, and just for the practice of doing so, what would that be? Negative four-thirds, two, two-thirds, negative two-thirds. Okay. Yeah, you could do that. I find this perfectly fine to leave right away. It's not a minor sign, there. it's just a tail on the two, I guess, something like that. Let's see what they got. They got both of those, negative four-thirds, two, two-thirds, negative two-thirds. Good for them. All right. But if you'll notice, theorem 2.1 dealt with addition of matrices as commutative and associative, then went to uh, one simple associative multiplication, but it's only when you had one matrix and two scalars. You can associate those. Then there's a multiplicative identity element and, and also the uh, uh, a couple of distributive properties. As long as you're careful with them, that's fine. And that dealt with multiplication. But you notice we didn't have any commutative property of, of multiplication. Doesn't exist. Associative property of multiplication, probably impossible as well, okay? So let's do a few properties of matrix multiplication. Top of page 54. All right. This, this theorem extends the algebra matrices to include some useful properties of matrix multiplication. Uh, and they do a proof of property two, and we'll sort of talk about that a little bit. The proofs of the remaining properties are left as exercise uh, for instance, exercise 62, which being even, you probably wouldn't 
want to do anyway, but it's up to you. So here is this. Now, A, B, and C are all matrices. Okay? Now, here's the, a little problem when you get the multiplication of matrices. With sizes such that the given matrix products are defined. Now I'm going to put of appropriate sizes. I hope you realize what I mean by that. I'm not going to write all those words, but you know, that the sizes are such that you, you can do the operations. Okay? C is a scalar. Okay? For some reason, that just disappeared. Okay. Uh, then the following properties are true. First, A times BC is equal to AB times C. Okay? And Marcus is here. Three out of four, one more, and we'll have perfect attendance. Hope it happens. Now let's see if indeed... Thanks for going out and rounding them up. Okay, good. Okay. All right. You know, we said that matrix commutative property of multiplication can't say it. Only in very rare circumstances will that ever work. But associative, we sort of weaseled around. And part of the weasel is because of the size issue. But as long as these are proper sizes, you're okay. Here on, yeah, top of page 54. There on 2.3. Okay? So let's pick some sizes here. Uh, let's start with the B. Pick any two letters to represent its size. Any two subscripts that you want to name it. Two letters. IJ. IJ, okay? We usually don't use those for this, but that's fine. B I J. That means it's I rows J columns. Usually you use those to represent which one of those, but that's fine. What would C have to be then? The first one has to be a in order to multiply them. Say again. J it has to be a J. Now, the second element can be anything. You want to pick another letter? I thought you might say that. Okay. Now, what would uh, A, any restriction on the first letter for A? None whatsoever. So give me another letter. Say again? I thought someone said something. Pick a letter. M? Okay. Let's do, did you say M or N? Okay, M. First letter M, but I contend to you we don't have that same option of the second letter. What's the second letter got to be? Say again. Not J. Say again. No, oh no, you can't. Don't you can't. Don't have an option of picking another letter now. Say again. Okay, that's an I J J K M. Nope, gotta be an I. You see why? The product of these two is going to be what? Ij. So in order to multiply by j by a, the, the second one here has to be the same as the first one there. So it's going to be an i. That's why we said of the appropriate sizes. Okay? You can't just throw any matrices up there. They have to have the right sizes. Okay. Now that now that we've chosen them, let's see if this makes sense. A, you chose to be an MI, and B, you chose to be an IJ, and C, you chose to be a JK, okay? Now, what would be the product of, okay, let's go back here. 
What would be the product of a BC? What size? I what? IK. And you multiply that by, it, by A, which is an MI, what do you get? MI by an IK? MK. Missionary kit. No, no, not that. Okay. Now. Yes, you got it. Okay. Now, let's see if this makes sense is consistent on the other side. It's not saying the numbers come out right. We're just seeing if the sizes come out right. Okay? What will you get multiplying a, a times B? What size would that be? MJ. Margaret Jane is my sister's initial. Okay. Multiply that by JK. MK. At least we got the same missionary kids on both sides. Okay? So, here we have, at least we know the sizes work. And then I contend with you the numbers will work too. That's what the theorem says anyway. So, associate, associated property of multi, let's see, matrix multiplication is associative as long as the matrices are of the right sizes. Okay? You can't switch them around, move one to the front or back, any place here because then it probably won't work. But as long as you keep the order right, then the associative property works okay. Now we did a distributive property, and this by the way is an associative property. I use all five letters, not just three, uh, of multiplication. Okay. Now, the second of these, like I said before, we had a couple of examples of distributive properties in 2.1, but they always involve scalars, okay? either one scalar adding two matrices together. Scalar multiplication over matrix addition or matrix multiplication over scalar addition. Perfect, it's in this ding, 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 ding. Winner here, okay. Jonathan's here, we're on um, page 54, top of the page, uh, theorem 2.3, number three. Okay. No, number two, sorry. Here's another, this now we're dealing only with matrices, but they've got to be the right sizes, okay? So you have an A times B plus C, and the contention is this is going to be AB plus AC, okay? Now, can we use the same sizes we did above? Why not? Yes, up here B and C were being multiplied, so you had certain restrictions that had to be true there. And generally they weren't the same size. Here you're adding them. They've got to be the same size or else you can't add them. So you give me some dimensions for B. Any two letters. M by N. And C would then be, have to be what? M by N as well. Okay. What would A have to be? Did you say X? Okay. X, M. Okay. Almost sounds like Christmas in a strange way. Okay, never mind. Okay, so if A, and by the way, when you do that, what's the sum of these two going to be? What size? M by N. And you multiply that by X by M, and what's the product going to be? X, N. Right? So let's see if that works here. This is an X, M. This is an MN. When you multiply those, what do you get? XN. And this is an XM. And this is an MN. So that one you multiply, you get a XN. So sure enough, you add two XNs and you get an XN. Now that's only dealing with the d dimensions, the sizes. I contend the numbers will work out well too. Generally, how do you prove this? You say, pick a, any old, and this is why I don't like to use the I's and J's, because this is where you usually use this. Any uh, A, and usually we'll say IJ for that, but we can't now because you use J. So let's use PQ. Any little A 
PQ, and you know, and then you have to pick the corresponding things in this too. So you're using lots and lots of letters, uh, and when you multiply those and you add them and do all the things, you see that you do get the right results. So that's usually what we do. That's how you go about proving these. Not a very simple process, and you say, and you just continue doing this, and you get the same result. That <laughs> means to keep from writing all of it down. So this is a form of distributive property of matrix multiplication over matrix addition. Okay, whereas before we had scalar multiplication over matrix addition and matrix multiplication over scalar addition, now we have matrix multiplication over matrix addition. And I'm not going to have room for the other two, so remember all the rules here, okay? Uh, and let's just start on the clean page. Is that okay? Number three. This time we're starting with A plus B multiplying by C. And what do you wind up with there? Any guesses? AC plus BC. Okay, that's a long time ago. Okay, now, again, you have to choose your sizes right. The same sizes work that we did for number two. Okay. What's different here? We can pick the same one. You used MN for A before, didn't you? I believe so. So we'll do MN. What size does B have to be now? No, it doesn't. It has to be, say again, MN, because you're adding. You can't add unless they're the same sizes. MN. Now C, what size could it be? It's got to be an N, and what do you say, A or H or what? A, okay, N, A, not applicable. Okay, good. All right. So let's see. When you add two MNs, what do you get? An MN. Multiply MN by N, A, and you get M, A, missing in action. Okay, M, I, A, never mind. All right. So we can't change the signs the sizes now. Let's see if this works over here. This is an M N. C was an N A. B was an M N. And C is still an N A. When you multiply those two, what do you get? M A plus A. M A. And that gives you an M A. So at least the sizes work. And if you go through and deal with the elements. You'll find out they work too. Okay? So, good deal. That's number three. Another distributive property, but this time we are distributing the addition. It's still multiplication over addition, but in the other order. Okay. Why do we have to list those twice? Wouldn't one have worked? No, because the sizes wouldn't work anymore. And you can't mix up any letters. The orders are fixed. Okay, now, almost. You could say BC plus BA, I mean AC, BC plus AC. You could change the addition because addition is commutative. Matrix addition is commutative, but you can't change, you can't call this CA. You can't move that in front because of the sizes wouldn't work. So if they work the first way, number uh, two, the way we did number two, the a was in front, B and C were in here added. That's good. Or if the C's over here, and A and B are added with the proper sizes, that's okay. But you can't do any swapping except what's allowed, which is the matrix addition is commutative. So this is another distributive property. Uh, I won't write it off. Okay? Number four. This time we use the scalar times the product AB. What do you guess that might be? This is sort of an associative property. 
that would be C A times B, but it would also be, this time you can change the order, why? You couldn't change the orders in three, or two, or one. <laughs> why can't you change the order here? Because C is a scalar. It doesn't have any size associated with it. It's just a number. This means you multiply these two together, and then multiply every element, and you would do all the elements there uh, in your product, multiply each of those elements by some scale. Now you have a C in every element, okay? Here, this is saying, first multiply the C times the A, so that's in there in every element in A, and then when you multiply that by B, yep, the C shows up everywhere again. Or multiply the C by B, now the C's in every element of B, all whatever size that is, and then when you multiply these two, the C's still in every element. So yeah, it doesn't matter where you multiply the C. So this is sort of an associative property of multiplication. I've got to put the OC in there. Of a scalar with two vectors. I mean two matrices. Okay. Before, we had an associative property uh, two scalars with one matrix. Okay, now we got uh, number one was associative property of three matrices. Now it's one, mat one scalar and two matrices. Except that we have to be restrictive of our sizes. How so? What size you want A to be? Second. BK? Is that what you said? Okay, you're trying to get things I can't come up with names for. Okay, you succeeded. Okay. What would B have to be? KT? Is that what you said? QD. Okay. All right. Now, that's not really KT. But what would the product be then? Say again? DT, delirium tremens. Okay, I know what that one is. Okay, never mind. We won't go there. And when you multiply C times it, C's a scalar. It doesn't change. It stays a DT. Well, up here, this stays a DK. Multiply C by it, it doesn't change. So that's a DK. Multiply that by KT, and sure enough, you get DTs. Oh, let's not say that again. Okay. Uh, and then over here, same thing. This was a DK, and C times a KT is still a KT, and then when you multiply those, you get a DT again. So yeah, it works. Uh, all three of those come out the same, at least in sizes. Now this isn't showing the numbers do. That's what the proofs are getting at. And again, you have to take each element and expand them and do all the messy things you do and show that sure enough multiplying that c doesn't matter where you multiply it shows up in every, every term all right it, not a bad idea to read for how they read through how they do the proofs now are any of you pure math majors or all of you engineering pre-engineering you're a math major okay you probably won't do do a little bit more, pay a little more attention to the proofs. Read those. You don't have a book yet, do you? I would definitely take a look because it could be in upper level math courses. You're going to be required to have some of those skills. I'm guessing the rest of you pre-engineering, is that right? Okay. Engineers don't care that much about proofs, do they? Okay. <laughs> you hope not anyway. No, I didn't say that, did I? Okay. I was a physicist, uh, not really care that much for me, but you might want to pay a little more attention to the proofs. Just don't have a lot of time to do them, so I'm not usually taking the time to do those. Maybe that's just wimping out on my part, but I'll gladly do it. Okay.
So here we want to find a matrix product ABC by grouping the factors first as AB times C and then as A times BC. Okay, so here's our three matrices. A equal 1 minus 2, 2 minus 1. Here's our B. 1, 0, 2. And 3, negative 2, 1. And here's our C. Negative 1, 0. 3, 1. 2, 4. Okay. Now it said first multiply AB first and then later multiply by C. Can we even do that? What's A times B? What's the size of A? And what's the size of B? Can you multiply those two? Sure. What's your answer going to be? Say again? Two by three. First of the second, last of the last. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get a two by three. Blank, blank, blank. Blank, blank, blank. Everywhere to blank, blank. Okay. First entry, multiplying A by B. What you get? Let's just start with the 1, 1. How do you multiply that? First row of A by the first column of B, and what do you get? Negative 5. Excellent. Want to do 1, 2 next? Okay. 1, 2 will then B multiply what? First row by the second column. Okay, what does that give you? Four. Want to do one, three next? So what would you multiply? First row by third column, and that gives you? Zero. Excellent. Want to do two, one next? What do you multiply then? Second row by? First column, that gives you negative 1. Excellent. Next, 2, 2. Two. Fantastic. Okay, if you have any questions, ask. And let's do 2, 3 next. So what would that give you? 3. All right. Then we're going to multiply that by C. Can you do that looking at it like that, or do I need to write it next to it? Okay. What size is this going to be? A, B is a 2 by 3. What is C? So what answer going to be? 2 by 2. All right. You want to do the 2, 1 first? I mean the 1, 1 first? What does that give you? Say again. 17. Okay. Want to do 1, 2 next? Four. Excellent. Want to do 2, 1 next? Say again. You may have said it right. I don't hear what. 13. That's what I saw. Okay. And then the last one. And by the way, I hope I haven't messed this up. Yeah. Okay. That is a four. It may sort of look like a zero, but that's a four. Now, did I mess that up? No, no. It was fine. Okay. So that's a two plus 12 is 14. Got it. Okay. This time, we're going to do BC. So let's do BC first. Multiply these two. Can we do that? What size is that going to give us? Or what size is B and what size is C? What size is B? Say again. B. Yeah, it's going to give you a 2 by 2. B is a 2 by 3. C is a 3 by 2. So that's going to give you a 2 by 2. So multiply those together. I think they're close enough. We can do those. What does that give you? 
3. Say that again. 8. Okay. Negative what? 7. Okay, I can't hear you. Negative 7. Is that what you said? Okay. Okay, let me... You're a little ahead of me. That's negative 3, minus 6, negative... Yeah, negative 7. Got it. Next. Two. Okay. And we want to multiply that by A now. Can you do that? And what size will that be? Two by two. Well, at least the size is right. Let's see if the numbers turn out right. What's the first one? Three plus 14 is 17. Looking good so far, isn't it? Next. Four. Yes, it does. Next. 13. Three out of four. Let's see if we can make it a perfect. What do we got? 14. All right. Yes, yes, yes. It does give you the same result. little practice matrix multiplication too, wasn't it? Good deal. All right. Any questions on that? All right. All right. Now, I think we've done this before, but in case we haven't or you've forgotten it, we'll do it again. This is example Four, when you have matrix A being 1, 3, 2, negative 1. And matrix B being 2, negative 1, 0, 2. Okay. Now. Can you multiply AB? Sure. Okay. AB would be what? What size? 2 by 2. Okay. So let's multiply. And what do you get? First one. 2. Second one. Five, excellent. Did you say you did say positive five, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, next. Yep. Next. Negative four. Right. Okay. Now, the next question. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to write my a over here. 1, 3, 2, minus 1, because it just helps me to have them in the right order. Can we do BA? Now, a lot of times you can't if the sizes don't match, okay? These are both 2 by 2, so yeah, you can multiply them either way. Does that mean we expect to get the same answer? No. Let's see if we do. What size will the answer be? Two by two, that's a, that's the same. So shouldn't we get the same numbers in there? Let's see. What would be the first one? Alrighty, we see not. Okay, but let's go on and do it. Is it? Yeah, seven. Okay. Four. Negative two. Nowhere close. There's one element the same that just happenstance. Okay? No way. Okay. Does that mean never? No, it doesn't mean never. But most of the time, generally, random to, even if there are two matrices that are the same size, the products are going to be the same size, generally the numbers will not be the same. So, 
Don't ever expect that to be. Multiplication of matrices in general is not commutative. What's that? Well, the matrix multiplication is reviewing, but what we're doing is, well, and that one to me was a review, but what we're doing is verifying some of the properties we were just talking about. Like that previous example was verifying that A, A, B times C is the same as A times B, C. That we didn't have before. That's commutative property of matrix multiplication. As long as the sizes are right to do matrix multiplication, then that those do come out being the same value. And that was that was uh, theorem 2.3 property number one. So we hadn't had that before. So that was new. This one, I'm pretty sure we had before, but it's just kind of reviewing that. So I agree that one is. Now, now, <laughs> I kept throwing in some weasel words here. In general, that's not true. If this is the first and only one you had ever seen, A is equal to 1, 2, 1, 1, and B is equal to negative 2, 4, 2, negative 2. Okay? If, if that had been the first one you tried this on, what does this AB produce? Can you multiply it? What size? 2 by 2. What values? Say again. 2. Zero. Zero. You're getting stuck here, haven't you? Okay. Two. Okay, let's try it the other way. So I'm going to write my A over here. One, two, one, one. To make B A easier to do. What size will that be? Two by two. Two by two. So that part's the same. What do you get here? Two. two. Hey, that's looking okay. Next. Zero. Zero. Two. Hey, if this had been the first one to look at, we'd say, yes, multiplication of two matrices is commutative. No, it isn't. <laughs> but it doesn't say that it never is commutative. Okay? Now, you don't know it yet, but these are special matrices. Not super special, but they are special. Now, is it sort of bizarre that you came up with a uh, matrix of the main diagonal, those values are the same, and the off diagonals are both zeros? Not by chance, okay? Just about, uh, I, I don't want to say all, but just about any two matrices you find are commutative, they will have that problem main diagonal values will be the same and the off diagonal values will all be zeros. Okay. There's a reason for that. We'll get to it later. Okay. Now, somehow I think somewhere in way out in Nether Neverland there may be an example that that's not true, but I don't know it. Okay, so I do know that fact. Okay. Another important quality of matrix algebra is that it does not have a general cancellation property for matrix multiplication. That is, let me go and do a new page here. If we have that the product of these two matrices, AC, if they are the right sizes and everything, and we happen to know that that's the same as BC. B and C must have the same sizes of A. I mean, B has to have the same size as A. C is the same as C. So, uh, But if that happens to be true, what can you conclude from that? Anything? If 
AC is equal to BC, what can you conclude? What would be your temptation to conclude? You would be tempted to say A is equal to B. Okay? Would you be right? Let's see. Let's test this with these matrices. A is 1, 3, 0, 1. B is 2, 4, 2, 3. C is 1, negative 2, negative 1, 2. Right? All right. So let's test this. Let's do A, C. Can you do that the way it sits? Those two multiplied together? What size will it be? 2 by 2. You can multiply it. We'll get it 2 by 2. Multiply those two. What do we get? Negative 2. Okay. Next. Four, got it. Next. Negative one. Next. Two. All right. All right, that works okay. Let's try BC. Can you multiply those? Sure you can. Comes out two by two again. Let's multiply them. Negative two. Okay. Four. Okay. Negative one. Okay. Say again. Two. Look at that. AB is equal to AC. Therefore, A is equal to B, right? Right? Is A equal to B? No. Okay? So you can't say this is true. In fact, in general, that is not true. Okay? It could be true, but in general it's not. So you can't cancel out the C's. Okay? Divide out the C's. We don't even know what matrix division is. Notice we haven't defined matrix division. Don't even go there. Okay? Yeah. So, no, we cannot cancel out the C. It's say a division here. What's that? I think that's my division here. Well, I don't want to say no. There is something that's sort of like it, and we'll get to that coming soon in a station near you. Okay. So, can't wait, can we? Okay. Um. Now, let's go back to a concept I think we've hit before. If I said I sub n, what does that connote to you? Haven't we hit that before? Okay. You remember what it stood for? Again, it's called the identity matrix. Now, most of our matrices have two letters after them. This only has one. Why? To talk about an identity matrix, that means guarantee it has to be squared. So you only need one dimension. It's an n by n. Why well, write it twice? It's an i n. Now, what does that mean? Can you tell me what an identity matrix looks like? Anyone want to guess at the first album? One. Very good. Next one. Zero. Next one. Zero. Dot, dot, dot. Up to zero. Okay. Next row. Zero. One. Zero. Dot, dot, dot. Zero. Next row. Zero, and 
zero, one, dot, 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 zero, dot, 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 zero, dot, 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 zero, dot, 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 zero, dot, 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 one, very good. And this is also a dot, dot, dot. Whoa. Okay. That's your identity matrix. How do you define it? You got ones on the main diagonal. That's the upper left, the lower right diagonal. Zeros everywhere else. Well, that came pretty close to the description we just talked about a short while ago. What was that one? multiplied two matrices and they came out the commutative they, they come out the same what does that product look like main diagonal was the same thing with zeros everywhere else it was just a multiple of the identity matrix that's where we're going okay we're getting close to something we're going to get there shortly Okay, who knows how long shortly is. Oh, we got some time. Okay, so give me some, if I ask you for I sub 1, what would that be? Matrix I sub 1, how, what size is it? Pretty simple. So one by one, that's what the one stands for. And what would be its element? One, it's the identity matrix. Multiply that by any matrix that makes sense, gonna give you the same thing. How about I2? It's gonna be a two by two. And what are those four elements gonna be? One, zero, Zero, one, you got it. What would I3 be? Three by three. What would the elements be? One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, you got it. I sub anything would be main diagonals are all ones, and it has to be square and everything else is zero. Good deal. Now, when the order of a matrix is understood to be n, you can say i sub n, but if the whole problem is obvious, you could just say i, you know, if, if it's pretty obvious what it is. As stated in theorem 2.4, which was coming up on the next page, uh, the matrix i sub n serves as the identity matrix for matrix multiplication. What was the identity matrix for matrix addition? First of this class. The identity matrix for matrix addition. It was a long time ago, I realized that. At least an hour ago. The zero matrix. Whatever size matrix you're adding to, it has to be the same size, but all the elements are zero. The identity matrix for multiplication, though, is the I matrix, which is ones in, I always square, it has to be square, and ones in the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Okay? So, here's theorem 2 4. If A is a matrix, ooh, okay? If A is a matrix of size M by N, okay, then the following properties are true. Two. The first ones of these is that A times I, but I has to be a certain size. What size do you think I has to be? N. Yes, because A is an M by N. <coughs> Now you have to multiply by IN because the number of rows of I has to be the same as the number of columns of A. And that was the N. And what you reckon that's equal to? 
Say again. A, you got it. You multiply A times the identity matrix of the right size, it always stays A. Uh, that's just like in numbers. If you multiply any number, negative pi fifths by 1, what do you get? Negative pi fifths. Okay? 1 is the multiplicative identity element for real numbers. Now, the other one of these would be some identity matrix being multiplied by A. What size would I have to be then? M, because the number of columns of I has to be the same as the number of rows of A, and since I is a square matrix, that means it has to be M. And guess what that product is equal to? A as well. Very good. So, notice it's not the same identity matrix multiplied on both sides. It's the one that fits, the one that, that you do. So, let's see if we can get uh, example 6 done. Here is a product of two matrices. The first one being a 3, negative 2, 4, 0, a negative 1, 1. Now, without looking at the book, if I multiply that by identity matrix, what size has it got to be? 2 by 2. Now, how would that identity matrix look? 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, let's multiply those two. Y'all been doing really well. What size are we going to wind up with? 3 by 2. Okay. So let's go with the first element. What do you get? Three. Next one. Say again. Oh, which way are you going? You're going down? Okay, if we go down, that's okay. Just surprise me. I don't care. Okay, what did that give you? Four. Okay, go down again. What do you get? Negative one. Let's now go up to the top. You get a negative two? Zero. Were y'all really doing it or are you just copying? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure enough, any matrix multiplied by the right size identity matrix will give you the same as what you started with. That's a zero, that's a zero. Sorry about the ugly writing. Okay. The B part there, I think we've got time to do it. Yes, we do. Let's multiply by this. Um, I'm going to start on a clean page. Okay. Uh, I want to multiply negative 2, 1, 4 by an identity matrix on the left. What identity, what size would that have to be? And how do you, what is the 3 by 3 identity matrix? 1, Zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And if you did those op that operation, what size are you going to wind up with on the right? Yes, you will get a three by one. Won't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, not up there though. Okay. All right. And what would? I think y'all are going to cheat, aren't you? Okay. A three by one. What would those elements be? Negative 2, 1. Did you really do that or are you just writing? Okay. You get it. Absolutely. So you see, you have to match the size of your identity matrix with the size of what you're multiplying and which side you're multiplying from. Make sure that works. And then whatever you do, you're going to get the same. All right. Let's see, one more little thing here. Uh, and this just seems like it's out of the blue, okay? For repeated multiplication of the square matrices, and those are about the only ones you can re multiply repeatedly, use the same exponential notation that you use for real numbers. So now this requires an A, B square, okay? 
whatever size it is, it has to be squared. Okay? Now, a to the first power is just a. a to the second power would be a times a, a, a. Okay? Now, and that also is going to be a square matrix, same size, right? And a cubed would be a times a times a, and so on and so forth, up to a sub k, a to the kth power, not sub k, a to the kth power, be a times a times a times dot 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 times a, as long as you have k factors of a. Where did that come from? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. One more little thing we have to do. What in the world would a to the zeroth power be? Okay, except that you're talking about a matrix here. What represents one in the matrix? The identity matrix of that same size, yes. Okay, so a to the zero is going to be your identity matrix of whatever size that is. Okay. Um, now, do we have time? No, we're out. I wish I sort of almost wish I hadn't started this, but we'll pick up just below in that same little section there. Okay. Um, homework exercises here. We came close to finishing 2 2. Think you can do any of the odds 1 through 5. I think you can do any of the odds 7 through 11. Do number 13. Do any of the odds 15 through 19. Do 21. Do 23. Do 25. Now, 27, we haven't done like one like this in class, but that's a fun one to do. Do it, okay? You can do, I think you can now do any of the odds 29 through 33. We've just introduced it. We haven't worked an example like it. Uh, but we'll hold off and end there. And if you can't get all that last group, I think you can. Uh, we'll do it when we go to class next time. All right, any questions? Okay. And, oh, and all four of you got your test, right? Okay, chapter one test. All right, have a great weekend working on those tests, working on this homework, working on your papers. Those who haven't turned it in, hint, hint. Okay, and we'll see you Monday. Oh, I'll see all of you later today too, this afternoon, every one of them, two in one class and two in the other. See you then.